Good to be here. Welcome to the corner. <laughs> yes, yes, and it's a big corner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. So, I mean, you know, we, we usually have the corners to have conversations with persons within the industry. Mentors, entrepreneurs, and most of our mentors are entrepreneurs anyway, so we can just say entrepreneurs. And as we dive deeper into the corner, let's talk, can I hear about you? Dive into the mind of an entrepreneur, um, see what makes them tick, what makes them successful, um, even learn from their failures, right? And connect with them, let's talk, can I have those conversations. So, I mean, before we start this thing off, Marlon, can I tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, who is Marlon Espinosa? Well, that's really hard. I, I don't know why people start with the hardest questions, eh? but but yeah. Uh, since I was going to school, I just um, I don't know. I just had this entrepreneurship bug. I think it was because you know we weren't very well off, and you know um, we had to make money to buy the little things we wanted as young people. So you know, I would work after school in a, a supermarket. I would buy stuff and sell it to the neighbors, and I think it just became you know a way of life. And I think it just became a part of me that I was destined to be an entrepreneur based on, on my need to be independent and always have some money in my hand. Yeah. All right, nice. I know you're a, you're a man of many hats. <laughs> All right. Um, tell us a bit about the hats that you wear. Okay, so um, I've done a lot of businesses in my lifetime. I, you know, I've been in, you know, almost everything that you could think about. But most recently, for the last 20 years, I've been running my own specialty printing company called Caribbean Print and Display Solutions. And for the last six, a little more than six years, I've been running the Native Caribbean Foundation, which is an NGO that is geared towards um, building youth in, um, in our society using the arts and, um, and um, culture and the creative industry. So that's what I've been up to for the last um, few years. All right, nice. And I mean, you talked about, I guess, a for-profit business and an NGO, which is, uh, I, I, I don't like to use the word not-for-profit not because <laughs> for any NGO to be sustainable, you have to be making money as well, right? So, I mean, how do you, what would you say is the difference between the two, right, operating the two? Okay, so uh, there is a lot of difference and a little bit of difference. Uh, my printing company, basically, we... we manufacture specialty printed items for sale to the public and to corporate clients. And it's basically an exchange. I give you the product, you give me the money, and you know, everybody's happy. With the NGO, it's a, it's a little bit different. Um, it's, you're not actually selling a product. It's like a product within a product. So what we actually sell is tickets to shows, um, which is a commercial model, and those um, that income pays for the ability for us to do what we do, which is develop young people within the arts and so on. So an NGO not, is not necessarily a not-for-profit. We must make money to pay our stakeholders, our directors, our sound technicians, our lighting technicians, musical directors, and so on, um, set, design, and all of the things that, that we need to put on a show has to be paid for. So, yeah. so we, need to, we needed to build a revenue model around that that ensures that we get enough revenue to pay for what we expend. So um, while there is no set of money in the bank after a show, everyone is paid with the income that we get. So, so traditionally you think of a profit as money in the bank. We think our profit is actually being able to pay for the things that we need to fulfill our mission. Yeah, it's about how do you uh, reinvest that. It's not like everybody gets a bigger share if we make more profit, that is actually reinvest for the cause and that's staying in that mission. Right. And exactly. I know the biggest the, the biggest challenge that um NGOs not for profit have is sometimes chasing money might get you away from mission. Um mm -hmm. and it's about how do you focus on that mission even all the while still looking at the, <laughs> making money. All right. So how do you I mean advise other NGOs as as well in terms of how do you stay on mission? Okay, so when we first started Native Caribbean Foundation, we actually had two years, we took two years to, to plan our first show because we had to simulate, um, you know, all the, all the things that could go wrong, all, all, all the things that, that could go right, uh, try to build a robust build business model. I guess it was a bit of design thinking, which is exactly what YBTP um, tra trains with. It, it was Shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and 
at the time, we didn't know it was design thinking, but it actually was. It actually fits right into that YBTT model that is being used to train young entrepreneurs now. So, so we actually took about two years in that design thinking mode to actually come up with, with, with uh, a concept and a business plan behind it. And then, you know, uh, sort of um, tweak, cut to fit, um, improvise, you know, uh, until we got that model that we felt. Right. So, I mean, we, 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 we touched a bit on the, the, the model itself. And I think it's important for persons to understand that even in every business, um, the finished product is not always the finished product, <laughs> right? From the business standpoint, it's always reinventing yourself, yeah. prototyping, trying new things. <laughs> even, if, even if you have to start charging, pay, pay, pay catch up, <laughs> right? <laughs> trying to try do things along the way. Um, so there's something that I want to focus on, and I kind of want to bring the conversations in focus, um, specifically around a couple of topics. All right, so I'm going to give you a word. Let me know what it means in your head, right? And from that word, we're just going to have a little conversation on what does it mean to you. So my first word is mentorship. Ah, okay. So uh, being a YBTT mentor, we actually built mentorship into our business model, right? Mm -hmm. um, to me, I think that I get more from mentorship than I give because mentorship kind of, it, I, I set out trying to inspire other people and, you know, set them on, a, on the right path. But I'm listening to them and interacting with them. It inspires me as well to con continue to innovate. So mentorship to me is really not, um, I, I give more than I get. It, it really is something that I, I think that I get more than I give in terms of my own personal motivation as well as, um, you know, constantly causing me to think differently and innovate and, and you know, uh, really understand what it is I'm, I am trying to do personally. So I think I am also mentored by the people that I mentor. <laughs> I think, I mean, we always describe mentorship as paying it forward, but it's, it's great to understand it's a two-way street. Right by mentoring someone, you actually by seeing them on their journey, you're actually enhancing what you do. Right, and I'm picking from there. So, I mean, from a, a mentoring standpoint, what would you say is probably uh, uh, a mentoring moment for you in terms of while mentoring a young person, it almost would probably brought tears to your eyes to kind of see the growth and development in them. You could probably share. Well, I don't know if this is really on point what you're trying to see, or what if this answers the question. But recently, there was a, a sort of an award ceremony. And one of my mentees was asked to give a little, a little speech about, you know, what was his experience with me as a mentor. And while not going into details, what he said really brought tears to my eyes. And I, I feel that it also brought tears to everyone else's eyes as well. But I, I don't want to incriminate anybody. But really, <laughs> hearing, <laughs> hearing someone say that about, about me, uh, was really a, a, an emotional sort of um, turning point that um, really, it, it affected me. It made me want to continue to do what I do. It made me want to continue to do what I do with YBTT. And it, it really was a, 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 such a, a personal, um, personally satisfying moment for me. I think no award that I could have won would have compared to just hearing that person speak about me. So, yeah, I don't know if that yeah. answered the question, but, yeah. <laughs> it did, it did. And sometimes you don't understand the effect um, that you're having on a mentee. Um, and when you hear it from them, it's like, you sure I did that for you? Yeah. <laughs> There's so many things that they, they're talking about. That it, sometimes you, because you just give, you need to give, and you're not really putting a stamp and say, this is what I did for you and those things. And that's really what, is really what mentorship is about as a core at the core, it is a matter of how do you give up yourself, your experience, your knowledge, and sharing that with them. All right. So I'm going to see to my second word. Mm -hmm. And this will be a choice, right? Um, I like to put people in a hard, between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> All right. So when I hear from you, you talked about mentorship. And part of mentorship is learning from your experience. All right. So can you tell me what does either success or failure mean to you? 
And let's hear about the experience. Ah, okay. So I have been successful at a few businesses and I've been a failure at many. And if I had to choose a word right now, it would be the failure. The failure part of it is really the test, not the success. Success sometimes makes us arrogant, but failure makes us humble. And I think to progress, we need, you know, we need to have that failure for us to really catch ourselves and say, listen, I need to do better. I need to try harder. I need to think more. You know, I need to, I need to do more, right? Because I, I don't want to fail again. Um, as, as much as we would like to think that all the planning and the, the, the care that we take to do what we do, that we should not fail if we do everything the right way. But failure has a way of sneaking up on you like a jump scare, right? And when, you know, um, when, when you least expect it, it would jump out of a corner and scare you to death. And you, you really need to, you know, run, scream, and then realize, but wait a minute, you know, I mean, I still alive, no ma'am. <laughs> Never stop being afraid and start again, you know? Um, so yeah, so failure is like a jump scare. You know it coming, right? Um, it, it, it always comes, but if you plan well, failure doesn't have the critical impact that it would have. So yes, you fail, but you don't fall all the way back down to the bottom of the ladder. You just, yeah, yeah you fall a few steps and then you need to pick yourself up and go again. So I would choose failure over success because success is inevitable once you fail often enough. So... <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Success is inevitable once you fail often enough. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah. So I would choose failure over success in terms of that word. All right. Great. So I think uh, and it's, it's an entrepreneurship part of your journey. The failures stick with you a little bit longer than the successes. So you'll be able to learn from it. And I think whether it be a, a, a defense mechanism or it, or it gives you an offensive attack because you know, okay, if I don't do this this time or if I don't take action, I can miss out on this opportunity. Yeah. And I think you learn that best from failure. Right? So it's um, failure, where it can be a defensive mechanism, I wouldn't try this again. It can also be an offensive. I need to try this faster. I need to try it again because it didn't work. Yeah. Right? So it's about learning. So I think, I mean, we started off the conversation. We talked about the failure, the successes. Um, and instead, you, 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 you were successful at a couple of businesses. You also failed at a couple of businesses. And with that, it comes with multitasking, wearing money hats. Mm -hmm. um, so you as an entrepreneur and running different types of businesses, how do you put yourself in that frame of mind, that, um, th that momentum, to have that skill to see I'm doing three or five different things together? Because as an entrepreneur, especially when you're starting out, <laughs> If you're a restaurant, you're the chef, you're the cook, you're the front of the house, you're the front of the house, you're the accountant doing all these things. How does multitasking play a part in terms of what you do? Well, um, multitasking is very hard. And mm -hmm. I am not the best person at multitasking, but I have been able to have a certain, draw a few lines. So there are some things that you can't multitask on. So if you're working in the printry and you're trying to um, you know, if you're trying to cut up some call cards, tape some bill books, whatever it is, print a poster, banner, um, you have to be focused on that. And yeah. you can't really be distracted because you can chop off a finger with a guillotine or something. So there are some times when multitasking is not recommended. But then there are other times when um, you can do several things at the same time. So for instance, I can be doing artwork on the computer, but I could be thinking, you know, this is a good point that I could put into this proposal that I need to submit for next week Friday, you know? So, so your fingers are doing one thing and your mind is doing something else, right? The other thing I found is that I can I slice pieces of the day out and allocate them for different things. So it's not multitasking, doing things in parallel, you know, one, you know, side by side, but it's taking turns. So sometimes yeah. I would come to the office at five in the morning because there are things that need to be done at nine. And if I start at eight, those things are not going to get done at nine. So I would come in at five o'clock and work until eight, then have breakfast. And then, then I start my nine o'clock job. So I always have to switch between Native Caribbean Foundation and Caribbean print. So Caribbean print is a more physical type of work, you know, actually producing um, goods. Native Caribbean Foundation is more planning and intellectual work. And it's difficult to do them side by side. So you need to slice that day up and stick to the slices. 
you know? So if you feel that, you know, you've allocated until 12, don't go down until 2 and say, you know, I'll make up that in the evening. Take a break, get what you need to be done from 2 to 4, let's say, or 1, 12 to 4, and then go back to the thing that you left off. Uh, so so that, that's really my little, the, the way that I, I get everything done um, as, as best as possible. So. Yes, I think that's probably not trying to multitask in the moment, yes. but try, but schedule multitasking schedule out your day so you're working on different things mm -hmm. throughout the entire day. Yeah. And it's to have that. But I, I guess a good part of that is understanding yourself and what you're strong at as well. Yeah. Because if you know you're weak at something, you want to be directly focused on that. If you're strong at something, you can probably do it as a second hand, like riding a bike. <laughs> then you might want to see if you can probably do that on your side. All right. And, and I mean, there's a, there's a challenge I want to give to you. Um, and, and we'll dive into that. I mean, they always say for an entrepreneur, besides, besides that, um, that technical world, that knowledge world, and things that you were born with. So you can, you can train and become more skilled. Talent is something that you already have and then knowledge around your business industry, right? So if you had to choose which one, <laughs> right, is most important, knowledge as an entrepreneur, having that skill, or having that talent, which would you choose? I would say knowledge, without hesitation. Um, there is, you know, someone could be born with a nice voice, but if you don't take vocal training, if you don't develop that skill, you're always going to be a karaoke singer. People are not born acrobats. They're not born um, engineers. They're not born lawyers, right? They, uh, they, they develop talent and skill in the areas that they choose. So um, if, you, if you look at uh, me, for instance, right? I like the arts. I like teaching. I like those things. But my professional qualifications are in business. And... Mm -hmm. You know, so I wouldn't be able to mentor properly if I didn't have that knowledge base, if I didn't have that degree, if I didn't have um, all those, you know, training modules that I study and keep abreast of what is happening in the training industry, keep abreast of, abreast of what is happening in entrepreneurship and so on. So knowledge hands down trumps skill and talent any day. Talent could be developed. Skill could be developed. But knowledge is something that you have to want. Knowledge is something that you have to actively seek out. And without that, mm. the skill and the talent is nothing. Yeah, yeah I think even from the, they always ask the question, can entrepreneurs be, are entrepreneurs born or are they made? All right? And I think a part of that knowledge aspect and gaining that knowledge is the made part. Right? Yes. Um, you, you have to become an entrepreneur. You, you do not, you're not just born running a business. It might be a creative, a creative person to come up with ideas, mm -hmm. but running a business is a whole skill set that this right. kind of needs to be developed, mm -hmm. right? From knowing if to multitask or not to multitask, mm -hmm. <laughs> from knowing when to ask for support as a, from a mentor, right? I mean, I had a last, I had a last question, a last one from here, um, and the, 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 the word is hope, <laughs> <laughs> right? As we still have a little bit of time, a little bit of time coming in from here. Right. The word is hope, right? And from you being in the sector, um, working alongside entrepreneurs, working alongside um, different mentors as well. What is your one hope for the entrepreneurship ecosystem? Well, that would have to be con pe people and organizations, again, like YBTT, that actually understand that entrepreneurship is not just the skill and the talent. Entrepreneurship, you have to know what you're doing. So, so training someone to, let me use a little example. In the creative industry, we have the creative people. We have the directors, the singers, the musicians, the playwriters, and all of those people who sometimes think that people like me are just the Shylocks, the money-hungry people who just, we just want to make money and everything. But they themselves walk around with their cap in their hand asking for donations and sponsorships and this and that. And they can't build resilient business models that ensure that their organizations continue to pay their bills and continue to exist. So when the sponsorship dries up, they don't, you know, they, they are not able to do what they set out to do, which is sing, dance, teach, act, whatever. So there has to be some level of knowledge in entrepreneurship that brings these people into a sustainable position. So 
uh, I think our app thing, I can't remember his name, said that show business and show business, show is half the size of business. The word show is half the size of business. And, uh, you know, the, the, I hope that one day people can, can understand that the entrepreneurs and the, and the trained entrepreneurs are essential to the sustainability of any business, whether it's creative or cultural. So I hope that the mindset towards entrepreneurship changes and people see entrepreneurship in every aspect of life. Yeah, I think it's, it's understanding as well that, like, it's, it's just like we said, um, entrepreneurship and running a business is a skill by itself, mm -hmm. right? Um, being a creative, you might need to partner with someone if you realize that that's not that your weak area. Yeah. You need someone who's strong in terms of running a business, able to kind of say, okay, yes, we have this, um, service, we have this product that we can sell here, but how do we turn this into a revenue generating business? Right. As opposed to something that we're doing on the side. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, Marlon, I mean, thank you for joining us. My last question, and see a couple of the mentors dropping some bombs here as well. Oh <laughs> <I'm laughs> <in the chat. laughs> right. Right. <No. laughs> um, if, 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 if a young entrepreneur starting off, um, getting into business, and I guess coming back full circle to the first word in terms of mentorship, right? What is your one piece of advice for that young person? Ah, choose your inspiration carefully. And be careful who you take advice from. Choose your inspiration carefully. I, I think that is, that is really what, um, you know, what I would advise you. Because I, I, I come in contact with a lot of entrepreneur, young entrepreneurs who take advice from the wrong people. And they idolize the wrong people. And they, you know, they, 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 they suffer severe disappointment because they listen to the wrong people. So you need to, if the first thing you need to learn is who to learn from. <laughs> and uh, I think that, that is probably, um, you know, my piece of advice for today. All right, great. So Marlon, thank you for joining us. Um, you can come off the corner. <laughs> All right, but folks... Check us out next week as we, we have a, another guest around the corner um, that's talking about entrepreneurship, getting insights from, from the, the entrepreneurs, the mentors, the consultants, people within the sector who are on the ground doing these things, right? And that is really what we want to talk to, right? So, Marlon, again, thank you for joining us. I mean, we talked about mentorship. We talked about, well, failure over success. We talked about multitasking, all the different hats. Uh, and it's not multitasking in a moment, but multitask throughout the day and plan for it as well. Um, and then knowledge over skill and talent. And then we talked about the home. So thank you again, folks. It was. See you all to the next time. It was wonderful. As, as, being as always. <laughs> and as always, um, if you have any currents, really, you can send it to Marlon. But as always, That's what we're talking about. <laughs> it's been real. <laughs> it's been nice. It's been real nice. Shadow run out. See you all next time. Thank you very much.